don't applaud yet. Uh, you have not seen anything. So um, maybe I should first uh, start uh, with. I, I give you the website where you can find the, the TA session. So it's on my web page. I will speak like this. It's better. D M A E N S F R. Um, uh, after having a look at the program session, uh, we will uh, make T, uh, TA1, then 2, 5, 3, 4, 6, and 7. So it's a bit confused, but uh, we'll try. So the goal of uh, the tutorial of today is to uh, enumerate some class of uh, trees. You've seen with the, the course of this morning that uh, we have a lot of uh, combinatorial uh, identities. And the goal of the first exercise, so I propose we, we start with the first one. And uh, the goal is to, uh, to introduce the, the Catalan numbers. Uh, maybe before we start, if anybody has a silly question or a good question uh, concerning the course, please feel free to ask. I might have a good answer. And if the question is very uh, interesting, I have candies to, uh, to give you, so that uh, please feel free to ask questions. Okay, let's go. You have a question. You say in the Sorry? Everything you say in the notes. Nothing. It's, no, no, it's not a good question. No candies. Okay, you work. I, I watch you, and uh, maybe I'll I, I give some corrections. So start with the first exercise. The goal is to find a bijection between the set. Maybe I'll, I'll draw a picture. We want to enumerate, I recall the notation, the set AN is the set of planar. So we've got a discussion about planar trees uh, this morning. They are interesting. And we want to enumerate, I don't know why, such uh, trees with edges. Okay, energies. So you've got an orientation. For example, this tree is not the same as this one, and we want to compute the number of such tree with energies. So in order to do that, it's more convenient, you will see why, to introduce the set of binary trees with two n uh, edges. They consist of binary trees, that, that is, every vertex as either zero or two children with two energies, okay? And first of all, I want to find a very nice, very nice well, bijection between this set and this set, okay? So if anybody has a very quick answer, please. Okay, so you work. Good idea. Maybe it's Alpha Candy. So, what's your name? Balage. Balage Rat. Okay. He proposes to uh, to. Okay, you've seen there is bijection between the set A N of uh, planar general tree. I will see. I uh, will say sorry. And uh, dig path. Dig path are in bijection with parentheses. Parentheses might be in bijection with binary trees. It's true. It's, everything is true because they have the same cardinality. But I want to find very quick bijection where you see like this that they, they, they are the same, uh, the same cardinality. Perhaps you can collapse, go, to go say from binary trees to general trees, collapse all right going edges. Exactly. This, this will work. So you take a binary tree like this. I'll make an example. 
Okay, and you see here you've, you've got two n edges, so twice the number of edges here. So first ID, ID is to contract half of the edges. So how to contract half of the edges? I could uh, make silly thing, I contract this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. No, I want an order manner. So for example, contract all the right going edges like this. All the right going edges are springs and you will contract all these edges, they are springs. Oh, by the way, uh, as you probably noticed, my English is not so good, so if everything, if anything is not clear, please ask questions about math, but also English. So, what do you obtain if you contract these edges? So I draw the picture here, you've got something like this, okay? And to exercise yourself, take this one, this planar tree with one, two, three, four, six edges, try to find the binary tree uh, uh, associated to this one. Okay, is it clear? You contract all the right going edges. So, here you would have something like this. These are the three edges corresponding to the uh, children of the root. Then here you've got two guys like this and maybe a guy like this. No, see, okay. Okay, is it clear? If you contract the right edges, you end up with this tree. Okay? Is everybody convinced? Okay, so now you will see these trees are more convenient to enumerate. And to do this, uh, I propose to use the theory of generating functions. That is, I set, I think it's B, B of Z. It's a formal series, formal series in the unknown Z, which is the sum Z to the 2N, the number of binary tree uh, with two energies for N positive. So, a priori, this series is a formal series, and we will, I ask you to explain one functional identity uh, with this uh, generating function. So, namely, b equals 1 plus z squared b squared. So you see in the series, the power of the Z, Z2N, the 2N corresponds to the number of edges. That is, uh, you count the trees with a weight Z per edge. And here you've got a Z squared. Well, why? Why? 
So it might be confusing if you are not familiar with uh, generating functions. But, okay, let, let's try to explain. Okay, you've got a very uh, easy decomposition for uh, binary trees with two energies. Okay, if n equals zero, then the only, this, I, I live in uh, homework, the only uh, binary tree with zero edges, this one. Okay. But if n is greater than uh, or equal to one, then a binary tree starts like this. Okay? And here you have something like 2k uh, edges, and here 2n minus k minus 1 edges, something like this, so that you have got uh, 2n edges in total. And okay, so if you write this in terms of cardinality, the cardinality of Bn with this decomposition, so suppose that n is greater than or equal to 1, it must be the sum for k equal 0 to uh, something, we'll see later, the cardinality of bk and times the cardinality of bk minus k minus 1. So, which exactly corresponds to this picture. Okay? And here you recognize that this, sorry, I missed cardinality. Here you recognize the coefficient of uh, z to uh, 2n minus 2 in the product b squared of z. So this is a generating function b. I put a square, and this bracket uh, means that we take the coefficient of uh, order 2n minus 2. So this is a first year algebra. And if you uh, sum up, you end up with, so the function b there is equal to 1 if n equals 0. And otherwise, it's b squared z, but not exactly because here we have the coefficient of order 2, 2 n minus 2, so we need to put a z squared here, which exactly corresponds that in counting here, if we put a z to the 2 n minus 2 here, we missed the weight of these two edges. So, this is the reason of this z square. Okay? It's just you take the, the functional equation and you particularize for every coefficient. Is it clear? Don't worry, you will have another try with a generating function for the second exercise.
Is it clear? If it's not, you, you've won a chocolate. <laughs> not in my pocket because they, they will melt. Please, please ask questions. If it's not, where, 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 uh, where should I uh, put a line? So this, this decomposition is very obvious, okay? This leads to this identity. Then you multiply each side by z to the 2n, and here you recognize the coefficient of order 2, 2, 2n minus 2 in this function, okay? But this is also the coefficient of z 2n in this function. Okay? But this identity is true for every n except 0. And for 0, the coefficient of order 0 in this series is 1, which is this one. Okay? So you look at every coefficient in this member, and every coefficient in this member, they are the same. Once again, there are formal series. I don't ask for convergence in the sense of analytic function. question. Maybe I should start throwing the, some candies. Up. Okay. Now that I have these functional identities, I've got two ways to solve this and to find the number, the, the, this coordinate, the cardinal of Bn. Either I take this formally and I apply, oops, sorry. I apply Lagrange inversion theorem that I uh, remind you at the, at the end of the, the sheet. So that, that's the first way. The second way is to say, okay, this is a second uh, order equation I can solve. Or I hope you can solve this. And you find something like b with square root, etc. But to extract the coefficient, you need to say that this b of z is a real function to take the square root. And you can do this quite easily by giving an a priori bound on the number here. Okay? How can I give an a priori bound on the number of trees with n edges? Can somebody give me a very crude bound for the number of trees with n edges. Very crude. I will <laughs> yeah? Louder, please. Yeah? So this corresponds to 2 to the 2n. 2 to, two to the 2n. 2, to, two, to, two, to 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 exactly. Why? Because this morning, uh, maybe I, I bring you your candies uh, in a few minutes. I recall from this morning that this set is in bijection with the set of dig paths that are paths which are non-negative up to time 2n. And such path, you've got less, uh, fewer path, uh, dig path than paths. And path, you've got 2 to the 2n pass with 2n steps. 2n steps. So these bounds, which is exponential, exponential bound, will give you an a priori radius of convergence for this uh, series. Since this is less than 4 to the uh, n, then you've got, uh, maybe I will be wrong, but something like, uh, okay, let's say 
at least one over 10 for a radius of convergence of this series. That is, if I put z, a complex number of modulus less than 1 over 10, or I guess it's uh, 1 half, then this has a well-defined sense. So this is a real complex number, and this identity holds for every z uh, which has modulus less than uh, 1 half. And then I can do uh, take square root and so on. Okay? But what I propose is to use the Lagrange inversion formula, which is totally formal. So you don't need uh, any uh, convergence result about the generating function. Yes? Actually, why do we need the theory value here? Because if you just solve the equation for B of Z, you get something. Yeah, but B, B of Z, as I, I wrote here, is a formal theory. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, so you, you, you can find a recursion. Uh, so this is exactly the same as solving this recurrence uh, equation. And this is not very easy. Okay? The, the, the easiest. Yeah. Finding the coefficients of the power series is well, not easy, but it's mechanical at least. And that power series satisfies the recurrence, so it has to be correct. You don't need the a pre recurrence. Yeah. Okay, you can do it this way. So you propose to solve, you, you close your eyes, you solve this, and then afterwards you say, oh, I have got, I've got a good radius of convergence. That means that with the, uh, okay, okay. Well, anyway, I propose to use uh, Lagrange inversion theorem, which is much more quicker. Okay, so this equation is equivalent to z times b of z equals z times 1 plus z times b squared. And here we have a good form to apply the Lagrange inversion theorem. And what do we have? So if we want to extract the cardinality of bn, we want to extract the coefficient of order 2n plus 1 in this series, so the coefficient of order z, 2n plus 1 in z b of z is so just Lagrange, 1 over 2n plus 1, the coefficient of order 2n in phi of u, and what is phi of u here? It's uh, 1 plus u squared at the power n, which is the real n to n plus 1. Okay? And this 
is quite easy. It's just a Newton binomial uh, identity. So you, you need to take n guys like this to, go to, to, to have a two, u to d to n. So, it's, so in the French notation, it's n this. And u should write like this. And at the end, you end up with this. And choose 2n plus 1, which is also 1 over n plus 1. Choose n among 2n. Okay? And this is the very well-known Catalan's number. So they are, they are very common number in uh, combinatorics. OK, so as a byproduct, we know the number of dig path with 2n steps. It's also Catalan of order n. And, OK, just to finish, an asymptotic of this formula is you've got a constant I don't want to compute. And 4 to the n and n to the minus 3 half. And this three half will play a role later. OK? So let's move to the second exercise. And I hope now you, you will handle the generating function like professionals. So I just remind you that uh, a Poisson uh, Gaetan Watson tree is a tree with 
of spring distribution given by this formula. You may, that is, you start with the root, then you, the root has a certain number of children given by a copy of this, uh, this distribution, and you iterate each of the children as a certain number of offspring, maybe zero, and something like this. Okay. And the goal of this exercise is to show that if you take a Poisson Galton Watson tree and you forget the order because when you have a Galton Watson tree it's a plain ordered tree you forget the order and you label the vertices then you end up with a Cayley tree and a Cayley tree I defined in the, in the exercise sheet is just a tree in the graph uh, theoretic sense with uh, labels on the vertices and this is well in the same spirit as this morning you you recall that if you take a Galton Watson tree with geometric one half distribution you condition on having uh, n vertices then it's uniform among the set of planar ordered trees with uh, energies. Here, we want to have uh, some kind of uh, analogous. I see that we've got a professional with a generating function over there.
So the idea to have the functional equation involving uh, P is, is the same as before. So T is a Galton-Watson tree with Poisson parameter 1 offspring distribution. And we want a functional equation involving this. So how starts such a tree, T? So it starts with a certain number of edges, OK? And from the property of Galton-Watson trees, this subtree here, this one here, here, they are independent copies of T. Okay? So, first of all, what is the proper, let, let us take this example. What's the probability that the, the first vertex, the root, have three children? So it's, uh, okay, Let, let's make more general. K, this probability is mu k, which is e to the minus one factorial k. Okay, and now you've got t1, t2, up to tk, independent subtrees, all distributed according to t. Okay, so conditionally on the event that the, f the root are scale children, What is the probability that, okay, uh, let's say the final tree has, let's say, n edges, okay? So if you want to have n edges, you must have, in this t1, t2, up to tk, you must have n minus k edges, okay? So the probability that T as energies is okay. So you first, oops, you first sum from k equals. Okay, you you must if you want n. Okay, n bigger than or equal to one. You sum from k equals one to infinity of. So the, as I said, the root must have, let's say, k children, k, um, k children, yeah, so mu k. And then you must sum for, let's say, i1 up to i k, the, it's a product, the probability of the subtree number uh, number uh, J. I want IK, I'm sorry. J equals 1 up to K of the subtree number J. I, J, edges. Well, okay. But now, if we have a look at this formula, and you, of course, you need that the sum of i1 up to ik is equal to n minus k. And we have the convention that if one of these uh, number is negative, then the, the probability is zero. Okay. Okay. So now, 
Well, now let's take the, the, other, sa the other side. What is exponential of z t? Let's have a look at the coefficient of z to the n in this series. Okay. And here, you want to extract the coefficient of z to the n inside, sorry, tk. So we have a z to the k here. So if we want the coefficient of order n here, we want to extract the coefficient of order n minus k here. And the coefficient of uh, n minus k in this series of z is exactly this one. Okay. And here you've got k equals zero, but the case k equals zero corresponds to the the trivial Galton Watson tree with uh, an empty uh, set of edges. And obviously you look at the yeah. Of course, here, they are exactly the same here. The, OK, I, OK, sorry. I should write this like this to be totally correct in t is two. OK, okay and uh, well, what you miss here, we only miss the uh, exponential minus 1, because mu of k is exponential minus 1 over k factorial. Uh, p, p, not t, p, p, not t, p. Yeah, thanks. Well, they, they are elementary calculations, but. Okay, then it's just an application uh, of Lagrange inversion theorem. So we want to compute the probability that the number of edges of t is n minus 1. 
Okay, so by definition, this is the coefficient of z to the n minus 1 in the, the series p. Okay, but p, what we have, p is equal to e to the minus 1 exponential of zp. It's not exactly uh, as in the Lagrange inversion theorem. Not exactly. Why? Because we must have an equation y equals z of phi of y. So what should I do? I multiply by z. And here I have an equation in the Lagrange form which is this one, OK? OK, so if I want the coefficient of z to the n minus 1 in p, it's the coefficient of z to the n in z p. I apply Lagrange because I am in a good shape. And I deduce 1 over n. The coefficient of u to the n minus 1 inside the phi u to the n. What is phi? Phi of u here is e to the minus 1 exponential of, of u, sorry. Okay, so I need this coefficient inside this. Okay, and I know this coefficient. You all know and you find the formula. So it's not so easy to uh, find this distribution if my uh, knowledge is not uh, so bad. It's the Borel distribution and something like this. So it's not a trivial result. OK. So now let's move to the third and last question of this exercise, which is the the core of the exercise, we want to show that if we take a galton watson tree with Poisson distribution, we label the vertices uniformly at random, and then we forget the other, then we've got a uniform Cayley tree. So I explain again. I take a Galton Watson tree with Poisson distribution. Okay. This tree is ordered. Okay. This is the 
the leftmost child of this vertex, and etc. We've got an order. It's an embedding in the plane. And then we give labels to the vertices of the tree, uniformly at random, from 1 up to n. Okay, and then we forget the order. That is, this tree, you can do this. This tree is the same level tree as this one. The same. It's just graph theoretic tree. And we want to show that once we do this procedure, we've got a uniform tree provided that we have n edges. Conditionally on having n edges, you've got a uniform uh, n vertices, sorry, you've got a uniform Kelly tree on n vertices. So what do we have to count? quite easy once you know what you want to show. OK, start, for example, yeah, with this one. I write like this, 3, 4, 5. And the question I ask is, uh, what are the Galton Watson trees, the plane trees, that can give this one once you've labeled uh, your tree? For example, can you have this tree from this Galton Watson tree? Well, it seems difficult, it's impossible. Why here you've got uh, a vertex of order 4, you've got non-vertex of order 4 in this tree. So we want just to count, it's a counting argument, the number of plane trees that will give rise to, once you've labeled, to this one. Okay? So let's do on this example. So first of all, choose a root. Assume that your Galton Watson tree starts the root was this vertex. So how many trees, Galton Watson trees, plane trees, could give rise to this one? So here you've got the seven, no choice, three, but here You've got a choice because you have to order these two branches. So either this branches is on the left or on the right. So let's say on the left. So you've got this one, one, here four, and here again you've got a choice. You want to, to choose between the left branches and the right branches. So for example, say this one is the left branches branch, and then you have got, you've got no choice. Okay? So I could have made this one as well. And I've got other trees. How many? So if the seven was the root, how many choice did I have? Here, one choice. How many? Two. I have to choose between these two branches. Once I've made this choice, I move to the one. I've got another choice with two possibilities. OK? Now let us generalize. Imagine that we, we have another vertex here. So I start here. Assume this is my root. 
I make a first choice here, and then I have another choice to make here. And how many choice I have if this one has three children? I must choose an order between three branches. So I have factorial three possibilities. OK? So let us sum up. What is the probability that, OK, I fix a Cayley tree, let's say C0. It is a fixed Cayley tree. And I want to compute the probability that if I forget and label, OK, I, F and L, FL, is forget and label, forget the ordering and label the vertices of a Galton Watson tree T, what is the probability that it becomes C0. Okay, I do exactly what I did here. First, I must choose a root vertex. So I've got from k equals 1 to n possibilities. So this means I choose the uh, vertex labeled k as the root. Okay? In this example, k was 7. Okay? And now, so I have the sum of Galton Watson trees with uh, root equals to k, equal to k, such that the labeling and forgetting order give rise to C0 of let's, probability of t. Okay. Okay, so what is the probability of such a tree? I have fixed my root vertex. So now I move, once I have chosen, I need some color, once I have chosen a root vertex, I can order my tree starting from the root vertex. And so I have, now my tree is somehow rooted here and the flow goes uh, to the other direction. What is the probability that uh, no matter the ordering of the tree, what is the probability that a Galton Watson tree with Poisson distribution is this one? So here you arrive to this three, you must have two children. So it's mu of uh, e to the minus one divided by factorial two. Here you must have three children. So e to the minus one divided by three factorial. So this probability is always the same. This is just the product over the vertices of e to the minus one divided by the number of children of v, v vertices, factorial. And this is well defined because, okay, I have my root, I can say that this vertex has three children, okay? And now, how many trees do I have in this sum? So recall, at each node, I have to choose for uh, the leftmost, I have to choose an ordering between, between the children. So at each vertex, I have exactly factorial uh, the number of children choices. Okay? So this sum here, the number of trees in this sum is exactly the product over the vertices of factorial children of V. Okay? And once, uh, one minute, once I have chosen what, a root and an ordering, the labeling of my Galton-Watson tree is fixed. I must 
have this labeling. OK? Here, I fix 7. I choose, uh, in this example, I choose this branch to be the leftmost, then this branch to be the leftmost. Then the labeling is here. You can see. So here, once I have made this choice, the labeling is fixed. So the probability here is not exactly this, but I should divide by 1 over n factorial. OK? What was your question? No, 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 no. N vertices, N minus 1 edges. N vertices. OK? Is that clear? I choose a root. Then to fix uh, an ordering of my tree, I just have to choose at each vertex factorial, uh, a choice between factorial, the number of children of this vertex. Well, now you see that, uh, that the, the Poisson distribute uh, the Poisson. Yes, the Poisson of parameter 1 is uh, suited to this problem, because here you've got the product of uh, 1 over children of v factorial, and here you've got exactly the product. So they cancel. And you end up with probability that forgetting and labeling a galton watson tree called C0 is just, OK, so what do we have here? We have a product of e minus 1 for each vertex, so e to the minus n. We've got a factorial 1 over n factorial. And here we add the sum. N. OK? So what do we see? We see that this only depends on N. So the probability is thus uniform conditionally on having N vertices. And Furthermore, thanks to the last question, we know that the probability that t has, well, it was a good question, n minus 1 and just so n vertices. We know this probability. We, we've just computed it, which was n to the e to the minus n over factorial n. Is that right? OK. So now, what is the probability that the forgetting and labeling a Galton-Watson tree with Poisson distribution gives rise to C0 fixed conditionally on t as n minus 1 inches? It is just. So e to the minus n, n factorial n, divided by this thing. So e to the minus n. OK? Everything cancels out except this. And we've got this. Since we know that the probability, OK, the probability always, uh, as uh, in this case, only depends on n. So the probability is the probability, I mean, the, the distribution of the forgetting and labeling of a Galton Watson tree with Poisson n is uniform on the set of Cayley trees. And furthermore, we have an expression of the number of Cayley trees. This immediately gives the number of Cayley trees the inverse of the probability of the probability since the probability is uniform. And this is not a trivial result at all. Okay? So why is it uniform? 
it's uniform because it does not depend on C0. It's always the same. If I give you a, a set with n elements and such that the probability of a guy is always the same, it must be uniform. OK? So with probabilistic arguments, we can, for example, enumerate the number of Cayley trees. Okay, but we, we add this uh, Lagrange inversion theorem and the, the, the Borel distribution, which is not easy at all. So I propose in the okay, last five minutes to have a just sketch of the Lagrange inversion theorem, and you will see that the Lagrange inversion theorem is nothing but Cauchy formula. So just try to find out by yourself. Any questions so far? Well, so far, uh, any questions? So what is the context, just before you start, what is the context of Lagrange inversion theorem? You've got a formal series, Y, in the unknown Z, and you know that Y satisfies a formal equation. Y of Z is equal to Z times phi, which is a function, of Y of Z. And you know that phi is given, phi of U, say, is given as a formal theory u to the n phi of n for n non-negative. And the only assumption is that phi of 0 is non-zero. OK? So we had two examples of this situation. So the first question is to show that this equation, if I, if I give you this equation, it's sufficient for uh, recovering all the coefficients of y. Okay. 